In today's episode of the vlog, I'm going to be telling you some dark Scottish legends that you might just wish that you never heard. That's coming right up. Hello folks, how are you doing? Welcome to my vlog. My name is Sean and I am a YouTuber from Edinburgh in Scotland. I talk all about Scottish culture, tell Scottish stories, take you on Scottish adventures right here on this channel. Welcome. If you are new here, please do hit the big red subscribe button down below so that you can join the clan and keep in touch with all my adventures. If I'm not mistaken, it is October. October is my very favourite month of the year. So many things happen in my life in October. It's my birthday in October. It is also the month of Halloween. And in Scotland, I hope you know this, we love a good ghost story. We love a good Halloween tale. Because right here in Scotland, we are a nation of storytellers. You will have to have been living under a rock if you haven't heard of the Loch Ness Monster, for example. That is one Scottish legend and we have many of them. Some of them are nice and friendly and fluffy. Others are really dark and terrible. And I wanted to do today's video as a starter of a little bit of a mini series of Scottish stories that I'm going to be telling over October. And I thought I'd start the series by telling you some of the more creepy, dark and downright sinister legends that we have from Scotland. Are you ready for this? I'm not sure I am. Cue the scary music. The first story I want to tell you about is that of Sonny Bean or the Bean family, the Bean clan. That might sound like a nice friendly name. Where do we know a Bean from? Mr. Bean, of course. Funny guy, right? Well, our Sonny Bean in Scotland was not a funny guy. In the late 16th century, there was a family of what were known as cannibals at the time, who were also inbred, who lived in a cave on the Ayrshire coast, which people now believe was Benani Cave. Legend has it, and it's been passed on through the centuries ever since then, but was rife in those days when people first caught the family and imprisoned them and eventually executed them. The family were cannibals. They used to lure people to the cave and kill them and then eat them. I did a vlog about the Ayrshire coast, an Outlander vlog, and there's a lot of caves along there. Back in those days, it would have been a wild coastline and somewhere where nobody would have heard your screams had you went missing. Now, apparently, Sonny Bean, the head of the family himself, started off just as a robber. He used to rob people, but then didn't want to be incriminated, so murdered his victims, and then didn't have anywhere to dispose of his victims' bodies, so took them back to the cave and then started eating them along with his big family. But one day, the Bean family attacked a couple, and the man managed to run away and get safety. And he went straight to Glasgow's magistrates and told them the story and gave them a list of names of people who had went missing in the area. And the Glasgow magistrates decided to send this news straight off to the top, King James I, who came up to Ayrshire with an army of 400 men to attack the Sonny Bean family. And this is crazy, right? Recorded history says that the king and his army found 45 members of the family in their cave, where they found a lot of body parts all hanging up inside the cave drying and curing and ready for eating. And when they got to Edinburgh, it was decided that the whole entire family would be executed. It's a crazy, bizarre story, gruesome. It was said that up to a thousand people went missing in that time and were eaten by the family. An absolutely bizarre story and actually inspired a Hollywood film, The Hills of Eyes. Another Scottish legend. And this one has no specific time period, but has been passed down through the centuries by Scottish families, right? Kelpies. The Kelpies in Scotland are a mythical horse-like creature that live in the water. You'll actually see the big new statue off the road from Edinburgh to Stirling, the two big massive Kelpie monuments. And it's just such a pretty sight. If you're coming to Scotland, I highly recommend you check out the Kelpie monuments. But far from being a cute and cuddly story, the Kelpies were actually said to be creatures that lured humans in to interact with them into the water. And the humans used to jump on their back and ride them through the water. And it was at this point that the humans were then dragged underwater, drowned, and then never to be seen again. We are a cheery bunch here in Scotland. The next story is an Edinburgh classic, and is a story that has terrorised visitors to Edinburgh over the last hundred years or so, but it is a great story. In the 17th century, there was a man known as George Mackenzie, who today is known as the most aggressive poltergeist, not just in Scotland, but the whole world. Hundreds of people who have visited the site where he frequents have come away actually attacked bloodied, scarred, and scratched. George Mackenzie was asked by King Charles I to put down the Covenanter rebellious movement, which was one of many religious battles that's happened in Scotland over the years. Anyway, the Covenanters, the people who were fighting against the king, were all rounded up and brought to Edinburgh and were put in a prison, the Covenanters prison, which exists at Greyfriars Kirkyard in Edinburgh. George Mackenzie overseen those prisoners 
and tortured them all slowly and painfully over a winter until they all died. And his torture was so obscene and so nasty that Mackenzie himself got the nickname throughout Edinburgh as Bloody Mackenzie. Mackenzie died one day as well and he was buried in the graveyard right next to where the prison where he tortured his victims and actually took up one of the finest mausoleums in the whole churchyard. Now there's two stories connecting to how this happened about 100 years ago or so. One was that a homeless man broke into the mausoleum looking for somewhere warm to stay for a night and disturbed the actual grave site of Mackenzie. And the homeless man fell through the floor and disturbed his grave. Another story is that a group of kids broke into the mausoleum and disturbed the, the actual grave site as well, taking bones out and messing around and stuff. Ever since that day, that graveyard has been horrifically haunted, especially around the Covenanters prison. I'm actually getting severe goosebumps just telling you this story. Because I've been there before many times, guys. I've done so many videos about it and it freaks me the hell out. I feel really dark in that place. But it's a great story. And if any of you guys actually come to Edinburgh and are looking for a tour to do, I highly recommend you go on a nighttime tour of the Greyfires Kirkyard and learn all about Bloody Mackenzie. It's a great story. It's a scary story. Perfect for Halloween if you're visiting of this time of year. The next story relates to the Jacobite uprising and the final battle over the year after the battle where the British forces were largely victorious in defeating the Jacobites and sending Bonnie Prince Charlie on his way back to France. The British army also went through the Highlands systematically to basically stamp out rebellion, kick out all the families who they thought might have opposed them. They banned tartan, they banned the Scottish Gaelic way of life totally. Uh, and totally repressed it. They looted, they burned down houses, and they killed and they raped. There is one famous story. Appin, the wee town of Lochaber. The British troops were harassing Appin uh, and went into a farmyard where a woman was milking a cow. The soldier walked up to the cow and shot it dead and then pursued the woman who had been milking the cow. The soldier pursued her alone into a field. The girl picked up a stone in fright and chucked it at the soldier's head. The soldier was badly wounded on the floor and his comrades came and picked him up and took him to a local room for the night where he could recover, or hopefully recover. Well, we didn't. He actually died that night from his injuries, a head injury. He was buried the next day in a local churchyard, but a lot of the locals were furious on hearing the story of what he had tried to do and them actually harassing them as well. So they dug up the body, refusing to allow it to be buried anywhere near their village. And a relative of the girl who had been pursued actually cut off a big slice of skin from the dead soldier. And you know what he did with that bit of skin? He wrapped it around the base of his dirk to use it as a handle. So for the next hundred years after that, there was this legend of the Scottish dirk. It was seen as a sign of rebellion and not accepting the British torture of locals at the time. But after that, the case went cold, but they know that the family involved later emigrated to New Zealand. So there is a chance there is a family in New Zealand with the dirk of Appen in their cupboard or in their closet somewhere hiding as a family heirloom. If that family is you and you have the Dirk of Appen hiding away in your cupboard or your attic, please get in touch, I'd be delighted to know about it. Number five is an incredibly dark but real history story of a castle that I've never been to before up in Angus, Glamis Castle. You can actually go to Glamis Castle and do a tour nowadays if you want, but you might reconsider that option if you know the history of the monster of Glamis Castle. Glamis Castle has been the home of the Lion family since the 14th century. The legend has it that the castle has a secret hidden chamber. The 11th Earl's first son was the rightful heir of the Earlship and the estate in the castle that goes along with it. Their first son was called Thomas, born in October 21st, 1821, and by record died on the very same day of his birth. But the story goes that that son was actually massively deformed and the Earl and his wife, the 11th Earl, kept that child, who later grew into be an adult, as a prisoner in that hidden chamber in the castle. And get this, the couple were actually great great grandparents of the Queen Mother. The stories of the monster of Glamis circulated for many years and throughout the whole UK. People in high society were talking about this hidden chamber. The Earl himself, when he had guests over, became very shifty when people tried to bring up the subject. And it was a story that passed down through that whole family of Earls even until very recent times, because the rightful heirs to the Earlship all the way down were told the family secret on their 21st birthdays. But the basic story is a child that was born who would have been the rightful heir to the Earlship was born with severe deformities. And that child was hidden away from public out of, I don't know, some kind of shame of the family and, and hidden there for many, many years, never ever to be revealed. And the truth about how long he lived and when he died was never known. But Glamis Castle itself has actually been at the center of kind of ghosty, spooky, scary stories 
for a very, very long time. In 1830, Walter Scott decided to stay in a room at the castle to kind of investigate in his own rights the ghost stories of Glamis Castle. In his report, he said, As I heard door after door shut, after my conductor had retired, I began to consider myself as too far from the living and somewhat too near to the dead. I don't think I will be spending a night time there investigating for this vlog anytime soon. Sorry folks, it ain't gonna happen. There's this weird story about the Isle of Iona. I love Iona. Iona is a beautiful place off Mull on the west coast of Scotland. There's a story that's quite recent actually, 1929, about a woman who went there from London and died in very mysterious circumstances. Netta Fornario one day showed up on Isle of Iona in 1929. She was a member of an occult group called the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and claimed that she was on the island to, to seek healing because several individuals were attacking her telepathically. Later that week, she didn't return back to her lodgings and she was found on a farmer's field. She was found dead with no obvious cause, but she did have deep scratches on the bottom of her feet and on her legs. There was also a cross carved out into the turf nearby. Okay, the second tallest mountain in the UK, Ben McDewey in the Cairngorms. We've got the Loch Ness Monster, we already talked about the Glamis Castle Monster, and now we have the Ben McDewey Monster. This is something that has been corroborated by many, many climbers, a lot of them who have very high standing within the climbing community, and its actual name is in Gaelic. I'm not going to be able to pronounce this right, I'll put the name on the screen. The Amphiolathmore, probably not right. Gaelic speakers, you can shout at me and tell me how wrong I am, and I apologise. Many climbers have reported incomprehensible feelings of fear when climbing Ben McDewey's Scotland's second highest mountain. People have heard eerie footsteps following them. Others have seen lo a looming grey figure. In 1925, noted climber J. Norman Colley talked about an experience he had while climbing the mountain alone. And this is a quote. I began to think I heard something else than merely the noise of my own footsteps. For every few steps I took, I heard a crunch and then another crunch as if somebody was walking after me, but taking steps three or four times the length of my own. Ben McDewey, another location I am going to score off ever traveling alone in Scotland. I would suggest you guys do the same, lest you want to be encountering the Ben McDewey monster. Eight, another story from Edinburgh, Arthur C. On a summer's afternoon in 1836, a pack of schoolboys came upon a cave on the northeast face of Arthur's Seat, the mountain in the centre of Edinburgh. There were 17 miniature coffins laid beneath a few thin stone slabs. Each casket had a small human effigy, and these effigies were really well detailed, with expressive painted faces and clothes that had been carefully designed for each one. These coffins and human effigies were said to have been placed over a number of years based on the wear and tear of some of the models. Nobody knows who put those there. 17 human effigies in coffins on Arthur's seat. I didn't know about that story before, but it creeps me the hell out because that is just a few miles from where I live. What is that about? Is that some kind of satanic cult type of thing? Maybe I'll have to score Arthur's seat off the list of places I will be visiting on my own. Wait a minute. I'm starting to score off quite a lot of places in Scotland that I want to visit, that I do visit. Maybe this series isn't such a good idea after all. We have too many spooky stories. Okay, Robert the Bruce. We all know about Outlaw King, the Netflix movie, which is coming to Scotland next month. So I thought it would be very timely to talk about one of his most famous legends. And it's a legend that, if true, led to a lot of bloodshed in Scotland, a lot of death, but ultimately is a symbol of Scottish rebellion and we will fight, we will die for the cause, no matter what. Robert the Bruce eventually ended up on the run. He sat in the cave and wondered night after night what would be of his rebellion. A lot of the people fighting for him had either given up or had died. How would he take forward his rebellion? Would he keep going or would he give up? He sat in the cave and watched a spider who was weaving a web and trying to climb to the top. Six times the spider tried and failed to get to the top of his web but on the seventh time it persisted and made it to the top. And story has it that Robert the Bruce took inspiration from the spider that he saw in this cave and that is what led him to continue on his struggle. Ultimately it would lead to a lot of deaths with people fighting for the cause but he continued on nonetheless. And I think Robert the Bruce has been a character in Scotland who kind of sums up our attitude of never giving up. And he was inspired by that spider and that spider now sits alongside some banknotes here in this country. Last but not least, we have Finnick Glen, the Devil's Pulpit. This place has a really deep, dark Scottish legend attached to it, and it's also an Outlander filming location. I went there last year and did a vlog all about it. I will be putting down below the links to all of those vlogs, which kind of link and are related to these 
dark Scottish legends. But Finnick Glen is basically a deep gorge cut into the valley and the water that runs through that valley comes over red sandstone and is therefore bright red as well. But it's a really kind of eerie acoustic place. The sound booms in and out there. Uh, and it was given the name the Devil's Pulpit. There's a rock inside the Devil's Pulpit where the devil was said to do sermons to a group of worshippers. There were rumours that Druids used to go there in practice. There were rumours that people used to go there and do witchcraft. But that place has always been connected with the devil, devil worshipping. So I think one way or another, a lot of people used to actually go there to Phoenix Glen, to the Devil's Pulpit, and practice the dark arts. I think it's a fantastic place. And obviously because of its connection to Outlander, I've been there and I would recommend anybody go, but perhaps not alone. So that was it. My 10 Dark Scottish Legends. I hope you enjoyed some of these stories. These are things I'm going to investigate further over this month in different vlogs. As I said, like we have got a lot of Dark Legends and I think each one of those I told you could be investigated on their own right in vlogs and I might end up doing that. But listen guys, thank you very much for being here and watching this video. I've got a lot of vlogs coming up over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to New York Comic Con in a couple of days time and I can't wait to be showing you all that type of stuff. It's gonna be great. If you'd be interested in contributing to this channel's output and helping me put together these vlogs, I would very much appreciate if you might consider becoming a Patreon member of mine. The link is up here, patreon.com forward slash Sean vlog. You can sign up from as little as $1 a month and all the proceeds go towards helping me to make this content. You could also check out some of my Scottish Legend range merch. All of the Scottish Legend range is available on Amazon and the links for that are down below and on adventureeverything.club as well. And guys, lastly, please don't forget I have launched a second brand new YouTube channel which is non-Scottish related. It's about my travel and adventures. I would greatly appreciate if you would come over to that channel and check it out and hit the subscribe button as well. The link for all of that is down below. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you have an easy night after listening to some of those dark Scottish creepy legends, right? Maybe I won't. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a good night, morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world. Take care.